Hello everyone and welcome to New Life. My name is Tom Pounder. I'm the online campus pastor here and this is our Good Friday Reflections. Throughout the afternoon we're going to be spending time reflecting on God's goodness and Jesus' sacrifice. We're going to spend time worshiping the Lord but then we're also spending time in scripture as we reflect on how Jesus gave of his life so that we can have life and life to the full. So we're really excited that you're here with us today but before we begin I do want to highlight our connection card. If this is one of your first times here at New Life and you've never filled out a connection card, go to newlife.church slash connect, fill out the simple form and so that we can get you information about New Life and how you can connect very easily. Also, I do want to highlight prayer requests. If you have a prayer request today and you love someone to pray with you and for you, all you have to do is go to newlife.church slash prayer and you can know that someone is praying for you and with you today. All right, again, we're so glad that you're here with us for these Good Friday Reflections. I'll see you a little bit later after the reflection's over. And from the darkness I called your name And into darkness your mercy came You called me out lifted me up how great is your love you bore my weakness you took my shame buried my burdens in fields of grace you called me out lifted me up how great is your love From the heights of heaven, you step down to earth. Innocent perfection, you gave your life for us, and we are amazed. We stand in awe, for we have been changed by the power of the cross. How great, how great. How great is your love, how great, how great, how great is your love, how great, how great, how great is your love for us. And in your kindness, you lead me home, in your presence. me out and you lifted me up how great is your love from the heights of heaven you step down to earth in a sin perfection you gave your life for us and we are amazed yes we stand in awe for we have been changed by the power of the cross how great how great how great is your love how great how great how great is your love how great how great how great is your love for us never been and there will never be a God like you a love so true there has never been and there will never be a God like you a love so true there has never been there will never be a God like you, a love so true. There has never been, and there will never be a 
God like you, a love so true. As we continue in our worship this Good Friday, I just want us to be able to reflect and focus on some scripture that was told long ago by the prophet Isaiah. In chapter 53 of Isaiah, verse 3, here's what it says about who Jesus was going to be and what he was going to do for us. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of suffering who knew what sickness was. He was like someone people turned away from. He was despised and we didn't value him. Yet he himself bore our sicknesses and he carried our pains, but we in turn regarded him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was pierced because of our rebellion, crushed because of our iniquities. Punishment for our peace was on him and we are healed by his wounds. We all went astray like sheep. We all have turned to our own way and the Lord has punished him for the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughter, and like a sheep silent before her shears, he did not open his mouth. He was taken away because of oppression and judgment, and who considered his fate? For he was cut off from the land of the living. He was struck because of my people's rebellion. He was assigned a grave with the wicked, but he was with a rich man at his death because he had done no violence and he had not spoken deceitfully. And here's the promise that, that we have of what Christ did for us in verse 10. Yet the Lord was pleased to crush him severely. When you make him a guilt offering, he will see his seed, he will prolong his days, and by his hand, the Lord's pleasure will be accomplished. After his anguish, he will see light and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will carry their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him the many as a portion, and he will receive the mighty as a spoil, because he willingly submitted to death and was counted among the rebels. Yet he bore the sin of many and interceded for the rebels. You and I, we were rebels. We were in rebellion against God because of our sin that started with Adam and Eve, and yet God always had a plan for each and every one of us, and that plan was Jesus. And we see that in this prophecy, and then we see it fulfilled on Good Friday. A lot of times we think of Good Friday as a somber time and a solemn time, and it's good to pause and reflect on what our sin meant and that Jesus bore that sin for us. But it really was a Good Friday because God's wrath was pleased in that sacrifice, and His grace and His mercy was poured out for all of us so that we could have a relationship. On Good Friday, everything changed through the cross. So let's continue to worship Him now. Though our sins were red like crimson, they've been washed white as snow. All our debts have been forgiven, 
every selfish thing we've done. Now we stand here in his presence, completely overcome. Oh, the taste of pure redemption, the wonder of the cross. Mercy won the battle, grace came rushing in. lifting up, singing worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slain. All the glory and the honor to the name above all names. Mercy won the battle, grace came rushing.
maybe it's my personality or my church background, but Good Friday always seemed to me to be a strange day for us to stop and celebrate and worship. You know, I remember thinking, Good Friday, I mean, it, it, it's a day of death, it's a day of darkness. Easter Sunday, the tomb is empty. It's a day of life. It's a day of joy. I mean, as followers of Jesus Christ, we don't serve a dead martyr. We serve a living Savior. So why do we spend time to stop and focus on, on the events of Good Friday? And yet, it's appropriate that we do. I'm so glad that we do. It's kind of interesting how when you read the accounts of that Good Friday, it actually caused people to stop. The events of Good Friday caused people to stop and worship. Have you noticed that? In Luke chapter 23, verse uh, 37, we be, pick up our account of Good Friday where it says, the soldiers are mocking him and they say, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. They've heard him call himself the king of the Jews, the, the claims that he's king of the Jews. Well, save yourself. And, well, an inscription then was above Jesus that said, this is the king of the Jews. Then one of the criminals hanging there began to yell insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other answered, rebuking him, don't you even fear God since you are undergoing the same punishment? We are punished justly because we are getting back what we deserve for the things that we did. But this man has done nothing wrong. That's an amazing statement of faith. How does he know? How does he know that Jesus has done nothing wrong? He's observed enough of Jesus to realize he is a perfect man. He's different. In fact, he goes to the point of saying, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus appreciated that faith enough to be able to say to him, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Interesting, isn't it? There's something about the way that Jesus suffered that caused those around him to pause and say, this man is different. And the criminals, even this is pure. The, the one criminal who doesn't quite believe, you're not quite sure, at least is saying, aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. I mean, there's a part of him that does believe, even though you sense he doesn't have complete belief. The other criminal goes much further when he says, Jesus, when he says, not only is this a perfect man, but he says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom, not if you come into your kingdom, but when. And Jesus so respects his faith, so recognizes his faith that he gives him the promise that today he'll be with him in paradise. What is it about the way that Jesus died, the things that the criminals saw in Jesus that caused them to pause and worship? If we miss Good Friday, we miss that. Luke continues in verse 44. It says, it was now about the noon hour and darkness came over the whole land until three because the sun's light failed. The curtain of the sanctuary was split down the middle and Jesus called out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I entrust my spirit. Saying this, he breathed his last. Jesus was in control the whole time. When the centurion saw this, what had happened, he began to glorify God saying, this man really was righteous. All the crowds that had gathered for this spectacle, when they saw what had taken place, they went home striking their chests. I wonder why. But all who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Note that the centurion doesn't just say this man is righteous but it says even before that it says he glorified God there's something about the righteousness that he saw in Jesus that caused him to give glory to God in Matthew's account actually Matthew quotes a centurion as saying surely um, surely this was the son of God um, 
I love the John Wayne. I love that John Wayne plays the centurion in that, in the greatest story never told. Surely this man was the son of God. This is a man's man who's recognizing this is not just a man. This is not just an ordinary man. Um, some people think that these are just the ramblings of some polytheistic centurion. I don't think so. I think this is one who really does believe that Jesus is who he is because he pauses to worship God for what he sees in Jesus. What is it about Good Friday that causes us to glorify God, that causes you? What do you notice? What do you see in Jesus and in God that causes us to pause and praise? What did they see? I don't, I don't know. The Bible isn't explicit. Perhaps it's the silence of Jesus. Certainly the silence of Jesus is impressive. The Bible says in Isaiah 53, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, and yet he did not open his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, as a sheep before its shears is silent, so he opened not his mouth. These soldiers had seen many criminals beaten before, tried before. He had seen people who felt like they were out of control. Jesus didn't open his mouth. Jesus didn't act like somebody. He didn't talk like somebody who felt like circumstances were bigger than he. He conducted himself with a strength as though he knew that he was in control and he knew the one who is in control. He knew what was going on. The way Jesus took the lashes, he took those lashes as somebody different. These soldiers had lashed many people, but how do you take a beating when you know that you're taking a beating for somebody else? How do you know, how do you take the lashes when you know that by your lashes, others are being healed? They saw that in Jesus and it caused them to pause. They noticed. What is it that caused him to glorify God? Maybe it's because they really did wonder about Jesus' declaration of divinity Apparently, I think, I think that the, apparently the, 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 the um, thief on the cross understood this. Luke chapter 23 opens in Pilate's court and it says, before Pilate, they accused Jesus of saying, we found this man misleading our nation, opposing payment of taxes to Caesar, which is a lie, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. And so Pilate asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered, you say so. Now, that didn't cause Pilate to change his course of events, but it did cause others to pause and to wonder. And you wonder if there's just like this building of events that caused the teachable to learn. Certainly, they saw something in the supernatural events of the day that turned them to the glory of God. Verse 45 says that it was about noon, darkness came over the whole land until three because the sunlight failed. Darkness in the middle of the day kind of makes you wonder, huh, I wonder how these pieces all fit together. When you see God do something in your life, does it, do you just kind of brush past it or do you say, huh, I think God's answering prayer. Certainly the way that Jesus talked to God got their attention. Wouldn't you have loved to have heard, heard Jesus pray? Nobody ever talked to the Father the way the Son talked to the Father. Can you imagine hearing Jesus pray on the cross? Again, these soldiers had seen many criminals talk on the cross. They'd heard much language, I'm sure much profanity. I, I, I doubt that they'd heard many I know they, they never heard anybody pray to God the way they heard Jesus pray to God, let alone pray from the cross, let alone say things like Jesus said in verse 34, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they are doing. Who prays like that from the cross? Who forgives like that from the cross? Verse 46, when Jesus called out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I entrust my spirit. Saying this, he breathed his last. They'd seen enough. They'd heard Jesus' silence as well as his great confession. They watched his humble sacrifice, his confident surrender, the supernatural events surrounding his crucifixion. They heard his unique prayer. 
saw his unprecedented grace, and that was enough. Surely this man was the Son of God. What do you see when you see Jesus on the cross this Good Friday? If I'm not careful, I just kind of want to blow past it and get to the resurrection of Easter Sunday. And I miss the richness of the opportunity to worship even today in these events. I, I love to be reminded of the events that took place several years ago when Joshua Bell played at uh, LaFont Plaza Metro Station. Now, anybody who knows classical music is familiar with the name Joshua Bell, one of the finest violinists alive today. Um, on this particular day, he was playing a three and a half million dollar Stradivarius that had been, that was made in 1713. Now, Joshua Bell is known for playing in the finest concert halls around the world. The previous night he played uh, a concert to the, you know, some of the world leaders and to, to with some of the most expensive seats downtown D.C. But this day, he finds himself at rush hour at LaFont Plaza with a case open, his violin case open as he plays, playing the finest, some of the finest music ever written in history. Played for about 47 minutes. Thousands of people streamed past. 27 people actually stopped and contributed a little bit of appreciation with some dollars here and there. Only one person actually recognized him. The Washington Post had a few reporters down there, and they, the reporters stopped some of the commuters and asked for their telephone numbers, saying, hey, we're doing a survey on people's experience in the metro. Could we call you later to f talk to you about your experience in the metro? And they called these people later, and when they told them that, they asked them, um, did you hear anything unusual? Did you see anything unusual happening at the metro station that morning? They all almost all said, no, they really couldn't remember anything out of the ordinary. And when they told them, did you hear a violinist? When they told them there was a violinist there playing a three and a half million dollar Stradivarius, Joshua Bell, they were stunned. Few had stopped to show any appreciation. Almost everybody had missed him. I thought of that story when I thought of the way that I often treat Good Friday. How easy it is for us to be among the throngs who miss worshiping Jesus on this Good Friday because we rush past like commuters on a subway. Kind of like those at Jerusalem and Bethlehem and that when Jesus was born, most missed them, missed him, not because he was, not because they were bad people, they were just busy people. They just had other things to do, other priorities. The religious leaders in Israel missed him. For three and a half years, Jesus preached and, and showed signs that he is, he was the Messiah. And yet they missed him because they weren't teachable for some reason. Even Jesus' followers on Good Friday, Mary and the other women and John, they don't, they're, they don't say anything. They don't say, oh, we glorify God. Even they stay silent and seem to be missing what's going on. But those with eyes to see, those who are humble and teachable, did notice. That's why the centurion stops me in my tracks. For those of us in danger of running past the cross, it's good to pause and ask, what does the centurion hear that causes him to give God glory? What do the centurions see that caused them to say, surely this man was the son of God? I don't know exactly. The Bible isn't explicit. But I'm thankful for their example, and I wonder what God wants to say to you today. Glorify him, even in the crucifixion. The soldiers mocked him. They came offering him sour wine. If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. 
there was an inscription above him, this is the king of the Jews. What do you hear God saying? What do you hear that causes you to give God glory? Then one of the criminals hanging there began to yell insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other answered, rebuking him, don't you even fear God since you are undergoing the same punishment? We are punished justly because we're getting back what we deserve for the things that we did. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was about noon. Darkness came over the whole land until three because the sun's light failed. The curtain of the sanctuary in the temple was split down in the middle. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I entrust my spirits. Saying this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had happened, he began to glorify God, saying, this man really was righteous. All the crowds that had gathered for the spectacle when they saw what had taken place went home striking their chests. But all who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Heavenly Father, help us to see, give us eyes to see like these, like the centurion, like the, like the wicked sinful thief who's being crucified because he deserves to die. Lord, help us to see Christ this Good Friday as he brings glory to you through his obedience, through his suffering, through his righteousness, through his surrender. And may we then bring glory to you as well. Through Christ we pray these things. Amen. has the final word the cross has the final word the Savior has come with the morning light the cross has the final word the cross has the final word has the final word and he traded death for eternal life the cross has the final word There's nothing stronger, 
Nothing higher and nothing greater than the name of Jesus. All the honor, all the power, all the glory to the name of Jesus. There's nothing stronger, nothing higher. There's nothing greater than the name of Jesus and all the honor, all the power, all the glory to the name of Jesus. The cross has the final word. The cross has the has the final word the cross has the final word the cross has the final word he traded death for eternal life the cross has the final word Thanks so much for being with us today. I hope you really enjoy that time of worship and that time of reflection. And I hope that God met you where you are. Remember, God gave Jesus to die for us, to die for our sins, so that we could turn our lives around and focus on following Jesus. That when we hear the voice of the Lord and be obedient to him, following his commands, that we can have that life and life to the full. If you'd like to learn more about what it looks like to have a relationship with Jesus today, you can email me at tomp at newlife.church. I would love to talk to you today. I'd also love to invite you back for our Easter service. This is only part of the story. As we know, Jesus died on Good Friday, but then he rose on Easter Sunday. And so I want to invite you to Easter service at New Life. There's lots of different locations and lots of different times. So go to newlife.church. You can find the different service times and locations. Again, we would love to connect with you and really love to see how the story continues to unfold on Easter Sunday by inviting you to join with us either online or in person for Easter Sunday. Again, we're so glad that you're with us today. We hope and pray that you have a blessed rest of your day.